Good morning, developers. If you are new to the channel, my name is Rob, and it is JavaScript Tuesday, the day that we look at JavaScript as a language. And we've been looking at the updates to ECMAScript, uh, or JavaScript if you prefer, since ES6, which was the big 2015 release, which got all the press, but so many great things have continued to happen. We're, we're looking at them sort of one feature at a time. And today we are in ES13 or ECMAScript 2022, which has to do with regular expressions. So I have the, the MDN docs pulled up here for regular expressions. Two quick notes. One, if you are not familiar with the relationship between JavaScript and ECMAScript, or just want a little, little background on how the, the updates work, I will drop a few links in the description. Uh, two, if you're not familiar with regular expressions or you avoid them because they're scary or confusing, I've done a couple of videos recently on how they work. One of them is no code at all. One of them just focuses on patterns, that kind of thing. Please check those out. And, and if not mine, watch somebody's <laughs> because they are an insanely powerful tool that, that you should have at your, your, your disposal in your toolkit as a developer. You don't have to memorize everything. You don't have to memorize every pattern. Sometimes I go a long time without writing one for whatever reason and I have to go back and, and use a reference or whatever. That's totally normal in my experience. Just make sure that you, you're aware of how they work and, and how you, you'll use them. Uh, the new feature in, in ES13 or 2022 is this D option, which generates indices for substring matches. It's going to take a minute to, un, uh, to unpack this, so you can follow links if you want to. But I want to start by looking at this quick. Regular expressions have optional flags that allow for functionality. So they do not change the pattern itself. It more changes uh, or tells JavaScript how you want it to use the pattern or what you want it to do with the pattern. Uh, the two that you're most likely to be familiar with would be global searching or case insensitive searching. So in, by default, JavaScript will only look, and I think pretty much every language, will only find the first uh, hit or first match, first replace, etc., unless you give it the, the G uh, option and then it will do all of them. Uh, likewise, if you said go find me uh, an uppercase S, it won't match lowercase S's unless you give it this one, the, the I. These flags can be used separately or together in any order and are included as part of the regular expression. And this part is a little bit confusing. If you're not familiar with how regular expressions work, there are two ways to make them. And we're not going to spend a ton of time on this because the, the video is more focused on the feature here. But I've got a string already defined uh, in an HTML file with script tags. Feel free to, uh, to use Node.js if you want to. But uh, I'll make a variable called res for result, uh, and I will grab a string and I'll run match on it. And I will hand it a regular expression, which you can see in the, the tooltip there. I typically use two slashes. You can also do uh, a new uh, regular expression like so. However you do it uh, is fine, but I'm going to do two slashes. I'll put a backslash D in there, and I'll make a note here. Backslash D equals digit. So this is going to find the digits in this string. We will console.log our result. Let's hop over and refresh. And it kicks back an array. It found the one. It found the index here, which was in the, the zero spot. But that's all it found, even though we have a whole bunch of digits in there. Well, if I add at the end of this a G like that, I know that kind of looks weird if you're not used to seeing them. But if we come back over and refresh, it kicks back every number uh, and, and the order that it found them in is the order that it put them in. Okay, So that's G. If you put a D in, that is the new thing. This is, uh, this is D. And let's make a couple quick notes here. The D option is not <laughs> the same thing as backslash D. That's why I use digit here, just so that you could see the difference. It is an option and does not change the pattern itself, okay? Like, like we already, already kind of talked about, it's still just going to look for whatever's inside here. We're just telling it, hey, find all of them and also give me the, uh, give me the indices back when you get it, okay? It is part of the regex, just not the pattern. And when I say the regex or the regular expression, it's everything inside the parentheses here. Or if you were doing it this way, like I said, you could do new regex like that. That will work too. Come back over, refresh, does exactly the same thing. This is the regular expression. It's just whether or not you actually use the constructor or not. 
So that's example one. We're going to make another note here. The D option will behave differently depending on the method. Okay, what does that mean? We'll back over to the docs. If we scroll back up here, these are all of the methods that you can use with regular expressions in JavaScript. So execute, test, match, match all, search, replace, etc. Whether you get something back or not is going to depend on which one of these you use. We'll come back to execute in a minute, but I'll, I want to go back down here and I am going to click on this uh, has indices for its corresponding property. Uh, this is not usually going to be very interesting. Um, if you have a regular expression, you can run has indices on it and it will kick back true or false. So they've defined a regular expression here has indices on that expression itself. You'll get true or false back. You know, you may have a use case for that. Um, the interesting part here is in the description. It says here, slash D does not change the regular expressions interpretation or matching behavior in any way. Only provides additional information in the matching result. So make note of this. This is particularly useful. This flag primarily affects the return value of execute. If the D flag is present, it'll give you the indices property. So it will add that to the, the, the information that you get. That's because it comes back in the return value. All of the other methods like match and replace and so on, they call execute internally. Whether you get the indices back will depend on what that particular thing returns. So that's what we're saying here. The D option will behave differently depending on the method. And, and I guess I, I should say instead of the D option, let's say the D option return value will behave differently depending on the method. It will always behave the same, but your return value will, will vary. As a, for instance, if we come back over here, we used slash D, but we didn't get anything. That's because we used match. Match with the global uh, switch or option says, give me everything in order. JavaScript doesn't give us the, the indices because we didn't ask for them. If we come back over here, let's make a new variable called res2. Um, and for execute, we reverse the order. So I'm going to grab this same pattern dot uh, execute and then we hand it a string. So up above there, we did a string dot match and then gave it the regular expression down here. It's regular expression dot execute and then we give it the string. If we console.log res2, we've got global and we've and we've got the indices. We do a refresh, open this up. Uh, it gives us the same thing that we had before, but it includes the indices this time as when we ran match by itself. So if we get rid of G up here, do a quick refresh. These are identical. <laughs> um, if you had never seen that before, it's kind of interesting, but the indices is here in both cases. If we come back over, get rid of the D and refresh, naturally the indices drops as, um, as you would expect it to. Okay. The very last thing to wrap up, if we open it up, what it actually gives you are the first, uh, the first number is the, the starting index of the pattern match. And the second one is the ending. So if we change our pattern slightly, uh, I'm going to put in down here. Uh, let's do curly braces three. So this is our, our execute with, with our D. This is going to look for three consecutive digits. So this is going to be the match that we have five, four, and three. Come over and refresh, open it up. There sure enough is five, four, three. The indices it drops, the, the five index is where it starts. So zero, one, two, three, four. This is the five index. Six, seven, eight is where it actually terminate. So that's the first index with where the pattern would, would start over. So that's pretty much everything you need to know other than you just need to play with it and see, see when it shows up and when it doesn't just all depends on what the method is going to return. It won't be terribly useful until you find that you need it and then it will be incredibly useful to have. So keep it in your pocket. And until then, thanks for watching. I will see you next time.